What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be checking out both row based grids and column grids here in Figma. And really this applies to any software and how to use them effect effectively in order to establish a consistent amount of white space between the various elements of your layout. So this is gonna be the example we're going to create. We can see here it is without the grid view, but here is a view where we have both horizontal and vertical grids or otherwise known as row I versus column grids that we can see here. And I'm just going to talk about, you know, how to use a grid system like this in order to ensure equal and accurate white space between the various elements in your design in order to create what's ultimately a nice, consistent and cohesive design that flows well. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now wait one moment, if you're interested in UI design, perhaps you're interested in making your designs a reality in the browser, and that's achieved through front-end development with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If that's the case, you should definitely check out the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. They've recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get access to the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. All right, so let's get started here. I'm in Figma. I have a desktop orientation. This applies for any device size, essentially, and it's kind of longer, and so, um, what we'll start first with is creating that actual grid. So we're gonna have two of them, a horizontal and a vertical, or rather a column and grid. So we're gonna hit plus here. This here is gonna change this. Uh, we're gonna change this one to columns, which is the one you see used most often. On a desktop resolution, typically we'll use 12. Here for the column count, a lot of front-end frameworks use that. Um, also, we'll change this here. I usually, I use like around 120. Some people might use something like 80. It all depends on what your preferences is, or rather, and then gutter, which is the space between these elements will be at 20. Now, next up, we'll add another one, and this time it's going to be a row. All right, so for our row, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the count something to really high, like 240 or something. Um, and then we're also going to change the type uh, to, instead of stretching it, like if you try to adjust the frame size, it's gonna, uh, it'll end up stretching it. We don't want that, we want things to be consistent. We're just gonna say top. And then also for the height, we'll use 20. And also for the gutter, we'll change this to around five. All right, now also another thing I will want, I am gonna do is change this to black and change this one to black as well. And it's gonna work with our color scheme. So the, the color that you use and the opacity, it's all dependent on what works well with your project, just as long as you can see it uh, when it's overlaid on top of your interface. All right, so I should note, by the way, that the way I'm choosing to set up these rows and such, this is just my own personal method. I haven't really seen people structure these, I uh, you know, really, differently, um, but then again, I haven't seen many people do it anyhow, so this is how I personally do it. If there's a better way you all think of doing it, let me know in the comments because I don't know everything. All right. <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe. My wife would be the first uh, to agree with that. So um, now we have all these kind of these rows that are set up here. Um, let's get started just by creating kind of like a hero section and then we'll work down beneath that. Um, and create maybe one or two other sections. And the whole point of using this horizontal row, this grid system, is to ensure equal white space uh, between varying parts of our design. It's gonna help big time. Um, and so I think we're gonna go with a bit more of like a purplish color scheme right here. All right. Um, I'm also gonna to just be pasting in some elements here. So we're, we'll call this Yo Design. And the way I'm choosing to structure these things, if I zoom up here, um, I'm usually trying to place things within these rows, as we can see. And also I'm paying attention to our columns as well in terms of placement. Um, next up after that, we're just gonna have a simple um, section here where we have, and by the way, use your guides. So like right here, this is pretty good. Here's one. I. Let's put this one, this will be like portfolio. Maybe this is just a, a, a portfolio site of some sort. 
Uh, we don't necessarily have to stick within these columns. Uh, just make sure you're starting one at a column. Um, and it's kind of important to remember. There we go. Uh, portfolio, about me. We'll move these around in a second. We just wanna make sure there's equal white space between them. Contact, now we'll take all four and we'll make this one start right here at the right or, or end at the very right column. All right, next up, uh, we're gonna have a actual headline. So for a headline, I'm gonna paste a headline in, a really compelling headline for all, okay. so. How much white space should we have here? Well, there's a large degree of subjectivity. And what I mean by white space is the space between this element, the top of this type, at the top of the A in this A really, as it says, and the top of our logo or a nav bar section. So there is a degree of subjectivity here. Um, there isn't one right answer. Um, like for instance, if I moved it up though, this would be way too little white space. And I see people do this sometimes. It kills the design, it's just too cluttered. So I would say a sweet spot would probably, uh, especially on this desktop resolution, would probably be right around here. So what we wanna do is we wanna count, we wanna be mindful of the fact that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven area. So seven plus the gutter at the top and bottom. Um, and that seems to be pretty good. And you'll see why I count them and why this, why this will be important going forward. Next up after that, let's say we want to have a subheadline, which is very typical. I'm going to paste this one in here, and maybe we'll have this big, the, the difference or the space of perhaps like two of our little co uh, grid columns underneath it, or rows rather. So two plus the gutter right here. All right, that looks good. And I'm also going to paste in a, a photograph. All right, and if I go ahead, sometimes you wanna turn these off just to see what's happening. If I double click in here, there we go. That looks pretty good. We could probably also move this down, make it look interesting. Um, hmm. Probably, yeah, we're gonna have, definitely gonna move this up as well. So. I was counting these, uh, if we get them back here real quickly, our grid, get both of these out. So I was counting these up here because I want an equal amount of white space um, from here to here, based on from here down here uh, to the bottom. And so there were seven of them. All right, uh, if, if we get up here and we kind of zoom in, we can also adjust uh, the line height a little bit. There we go, or letting rather, and that way it ends right here. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so right underneath that one is where we would end it. So now we have an equal amount of white space from here to here based on from here to here. This creates symmetry in the design when it comes to consistently applying what's called your white space or the empty space of a design. So if I move this up a little bit, there we go. So that's one very good use case for a row-based grid. Um, we can also see here, if we look at this, this is measuring up to five columns, and this is five columns as well. Um, so a front-end developer, if not yourself, could come here and know that, hey, depending on what CSS framework we're using, uh, we know that this one has to be structured with a five column based on a 12 column grid system and it just makes life a lot easier uh, when you're adhering to your columns and your grids and all that. Um, so where would we start a next section? You know, what would be a logical place? Like if we had like a subheading um, or a subtitle, um, I would say it would be seven again, right here. So if I paste this in, let's get our primary color over here. We wouldn't wanna start here because that's an unequal amount of white space uh, from here to there based on from here to here or as compared to. So again, we'll count seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll get it started right here. And now we have an equal amount of white space between these two areas. All right, and so then next up, we can have a kind of like a card, like a testimonial card. And we could do the same thing here. You could see that this, uh, we're gonna have three of them on the same row, which means three times four is 12. So these are gonna span four. 
So if I hit duplicate, we'll move this over and then duplicate one more time. There we go. If I come back, it's kind of hard to see what things look like. So let's toggle these off. All right, that looks good. But what about the space between these elements? You know, what should those be? Well, we kind of established a certain amount of white space between the relationship of these two elements. Perhaps we could do the same thing here as well. So what we can do is once again, we'll bring these back. I believe there is a shortcut for that. I have not researched it because uh, it's a little pain, a little bit, pain, a little bit of a pain in the butt to do. But we could see clearly now um, there are two different grow, uh, grows, uh, row grids between them. And so if I toggle this back off, and it's very subtle, it's, 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 you can barely tell it based on these very soft shadows I use for these cards. But nonetheless, I now we have some consistency and in, in, in relationships that are created here in terms of our white space, which is very, very helpful. Um, and then what would you do next? All right, well, you could have another section down here and so what would we do? Muscle memory, this will be the last section uh, or the start of a section at least. Um, we could bring these back. We see this ends right here at this one. So, you know, we'll count seven. Maybe we'll, maybe you'll start a section with a different colored background, although you don't have to. Let's make sure this rectangle is in our frame. There we go. So if we look at the bottom of this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's gonna start right here and perhaps we will hide these real quick. And you can go with a different color. You can go with a, a different tone. Maybe you can go even real light like this, or you could just choose not to even have a container. Let's say we ha we'll have a container with this one real quickly, and then um, I'll demonstrate without one, and you'll see what I mean. You're probably confused on what I mean by without one. Let's uh, bring this to front. And again, we don't wanna just guess here. Now, you do see how we have these guides that are real handy. Uh, it shows a, a, a white space of 323 vertically um, compared to some of these other elements. So this is gonna be real close, but it may not actually be that accurate. It looks like it's not going to be enough of white space, but again, we wanna check that. So we'll turn on our row right here, and we'll see, is there one, two, three, four, five, six? Not quite, so it has to be down here, beginning on this one. All right, so then you could have a third section in that manner. So if I replicate this real quick, and let's hide that, we could just start another section right here and get rid of this area. So both of these would definitely work in that context. So if I hide this, Notice how everything just has a nice symmetry to it, uh, a nice consistency as, it's, uh, as it pertains to at least um, the, the white space. And of course, everything else, all the colors are, are consistently used. Um, the styles is consistently applied. Of course, it's not a, a full finished uh, project, but hopefully that will help those of you who have a hard time kind of eyeballing alignment um, it's, it's easier when you get into the front end development stage with, with CSS because you could just take a container like this, for instance, and apply padding to it. Um, but when you're actually designing, this is the way you do it. I, and, and this would be by applying the use of both uh, column-based grids and row grids. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If there are other techniques in terms of establishing consistent white space in columns and rows and all of that, let me know in, in the uh, comments here because I'm always interested to learn more myself. And this is just a way that I've personally approached it. So anyhow, as always, check out designcourse.com. It's going to be releasing soon here on January 4th of 2022. Enter your email if it's not yet released when you watch this. And I'll see you all real soon. Goodbye. <laughs>